Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome, my name is Christine. Today we are going to do a makeup tutorial for beginners. I'm gonna share a lot of my tips and tricks that all levels of makeup users will find helpful. So before we go ahead and get started, first make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and the little notification bell. I would love for you to join the notification fam. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Today's video is actually partially sponsored by e.l.f. I actually have a full face of e.l.f. makeup on my channel, so obviously I'm a big fan of the brand. I have a lot of new products from e.l.f. as well as old favorites. I'm gonna start off with the e.l.f. Nourish facial oil when I was reading the ingredients of this I was actually really impressed it contains a lot of really great ingredients like rosehip oil which I really love for my skin I did do my skincare this morning but I just feel a little bit dehydrated so I could use a little bit more especially if you are going to be wearing a full face of makeup foundation concealer all of that jazz you want to make sure that your skin is prepped and that way everything will just apply so much more smoothly next I'm going to be using the elf Poreless Putty Primer, and this is an old favorite of mine. It's such a goodie. It's so hyped, but for a good reason. This is a really, really great primer, and I feel like it actually works. A lot of primers out there don't really notice a difference, but with this, I do. So I'm just gonna take a small amount. You don't need a whole lot of this, and I'm gonna spread it mainly in my T-zone. Now, I don't think that primer is a necessary step. It kind of just helps to prolong your makeup. Also, whenever I have blemishes, I like to put primer over that because it just allows the makeup to apply on top smoothly. I'm actually gonna start off with the eyebrows. I'm gonna be using the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Pencil, and what's great about this brow pencil is it actually has a little angle tip so this actually makes it really easy for me to do my brows especially if you're a beginner if you want to get a pencil that instead of having a fine tip you want something that has more of an angled tip like this because it just is so much easier for doing your brows when I'm doing my brows too I find it easier to do a lot of like straight lines and kind of trace out the brow shape that I want and then Using lighter strokes, I'm gonna fill it in and then switching to the spoolie here and there to kind of brush out my brows so that way it just looks a little bit more natural. If you mess up a little bit like I did, it's totally fine. One trick that I like to do is I will grab a tissue and I can use that to kind of clean up the brows. You can also use concealer, but I've always just liked using tissue paper because it gets a job done. I also have these atrocious blemishes that I'm gonna show you my little trick for covering up a little bit later. I'm actually gonna prep my lips. I have loved this lip exfoliator from e.l.f. for so many years. It comes in a little tube form so it makes it super quick and easy to exfoliate my lips and then just wipe off the excess with a tissue or napkin. Eyeshadow can be a little bit intimidating so I like to do my eyes first that way if there's any fallout or any powders that fall onto my face it's super easy to wipe and clean away. Elf has these really cute eyeshadow palettes that I'm discovering for the first time and these are so affordable as well. These are the bite size eyeshadow palettes and this one right here is in the color are very bad. I feel like this is a really good neutral palette and they're so affordable that it's great if you want to try out some colors without spending a whole lot of money. So I think I'm going to be using this one. This one is in the color pumpkin pie. I'm not a huge believer in eyeshadow primer. I don't think it's necessary at all. If you struggle with your eyeshadows moving around a lot, you might try out eyeshadow primer. But for me, powdering my eyelids has always helped a ton. So I'm just going to pick up some of this Sephora pressed powder and using a fluffy brush, I'm just going to go ahead and set my eyelids. You can also use a translucent powder or some type of loose powder works as well. I'm gonna pick up this warm tone right here. I'm just gonna use that same brush that I used to set my eyeshadow and I'm just, excuse me? I'm just gonna pack this color all over my eyelid and kind of buff it out to the crease. This is a technique that I find super helpful and really, really easy, especially for beginners. If you don't wanna play with a lot of different shadows and you're just experimenting for the first time, Packing it all over your lid and kind of blending it out is kind of a great way to kind of get used to the look, get used to blending, and you don't have to dig in a lot of colors to kind of get that impact. You want to use windshield wiper motions. Blending actually takes a long time, and I think the longer that you spend with it, the better it's gonna look. A lot of the times in my makeup tutorials, I really speed up the process, so you don't really see how much time goes into blending, but usually I'm blending out my eyeshadow for like one to two minutes. Also towards the edges of my eyes, I will kind of flick the shadow up at an angle shape and I just find that is the most flattering for my eye shape. I didn't pick any more product either. I'm just using my brush just to make sure that everything is really nicely 
blended out. So I'm super happy with the way that looks. That eyeshadow just blended out so quickly and easily and that color is absolutely gorgeous. You could keep it like this if you wanted, but I want to add a little shimmer to my lid. I think I like the darker color, so I'm gonna pick up this one right here and just using my ring finger. I find that using my fingers really gets you a lot of pigment as well for the colors. So I'm just dragging this on my lid, making sure not to bring it too high because I just like my shimmer shades to stay a little bit more concentrated onto the center of my lid. Then I'm gonna go in with that same original brush that we used to blend out the matte shadow and I'm just gonna kind of buff out the edges and just make sure that everything is blended out and we don't have any harsh lines. I'm just gonna leave it like that so that it's quick and easy. Going in with mascara, I'm going to be using my Tried and True Laura Mercier Eyelash Curler. This is the best eyelash curler on the market. I'm going to be using the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. This is one of my favorite mascaras from the drugstore and it's so affordable as well. This wand makes it really great for getting a lot of volume. I'm not going to go too crazy with the mascara just because I am going to put on falsies. I also like to use mascara even when I'm putting on false lashes. Just because I feel like it helps to blend my natural lashes with the false lashes a little bit better. So I decided I wanted to darken my lash line a little bit more. I'm going to pick up a little angled brush and I'm going to pick up the dark brown in this palette. I don't even know if I should call it a little palette because it's so small. We're not going to do a wing liner or anything like that. We are just kind of packing it onto the lash line. So there you can see there's a little bit of difference. This eye just looks like it's a little bit more defined. It's just an easy step that you can do. Then we're gonna move into falsies. The false lashes that I have been wearing non-stop are these ones from Ilora. These are the Luxe Silk in the style Marquise. I think it was only $15 for three pairs of these, but I also wanted to show you a different style that's great for beginners. These are the Ardell Foam Mink Wispies, and I love these lashes. These are one of my favorite lashes, especially for beginners. When you're looking for lashes, you want to look for something that has a really, really thin band. You can see the Ilora ones have just a slightly thicker lash band so they're a smidge harder to work with than these ones so you want to make sure that you're getting a band that has a really really thin lash line they kind of flare up in the outer corner so it kind of just gives you a cattier look which i really really like i'm going to be using this duo brush on adhesive with vitamins and I'm just gonna quickly pop them on. If you wanna see a little tutorial on how to apply lashes, I'll go ahead and leave a IGTV link down below. Now that the eyes are done, I'm gonna move into the foundation. I've been using the Smashbox Studio Skin Hydrating Foundation and I have been obsessed. It looks so good on my skin. It looks beautiful in pictures and videos and the color match is also really, really great. I have it in shade 2.3. But I have so many videos on my channel recommending a lot of foundations that I really like from the drugstore. I will go ahead and link those videos above and below. So that is just one pump. I'm gonna use the sponge from e.l.f. I love the sponge, it's only six doulas. I also prefer using sponges as opposed to brushes just because I feel like sponges give you a more natural finish. I need a little bit more coverage, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up another pump and a half. Next, we are gonna use a new concealer. I'm super excited to try. ELF has this hydrating camo concealer, and I have it here in two shades. I think this one might be a little bit too deep for me. This one is in the shade medium beige. So I think I'm gonna be using the medium sand. These have a really big doe foot applicator. They remind me a lot of the Tarte Shape Tape. Adding a concealer that is a little bit lighter than your skin tone helps to bring that area forward. So any areas that are hollow like this, that you want to bring forward or blemishes that you want to conceal. I like to use a concealer that is about one to two shades lighter than my skin tone. Instead of doing the big triangle that you kind of see a lot on Instagram, I like to just put a little bit just like that and sometimes bring it down the nose as well. And that helps to kind of brighten those areas. And since I have blemishes, I'm gonna put it there too. As you get to the outer corners of your face, you don't have as high of coverage and that much product out there where you don't really need it as much. I'm also gonna put a little bit of concealer here to kind of help brighten that part of my face because that is where my face is naturally a little bit brighter as well. And then a little bit on my chin area. 
totally full coverage but see how it just really brightens up that eye area that is what we want and then i'm just gonna kind of drag it out here as well Okay, now that most of that is blended out, I'm actually gonna go in with the Slawless Concealer Brush from e.l.f. This is one of my favorite brushes. I actually will like to go in with a brush like this and kind of buff in around my T-zone. This just allows the product to really sink into the skin. It helps to blur out some of the pores that I have and buff out some of that extra product so it doesn't look cakey. So I'm actually gonna go in with a matte loose translucent powder just so that it really sets everything in place. And I just kind of prefer a more matte look for my under eyes. So I'm gonna use this one from Milk. Oh, you know what? I have a cream blush. This is kind of an extra step. You are really new to makeup and using creams is kind of like overwhelming for you. You can totally skip this step, but I prefer using a cream product as my blush or bronzer. It just makes my cheeks look so naturally flush. So I have two different multi-sticks here from e.l.f. This one is in the shade Bronze Cherry. Looks like a good apricot color and I think this one is in the shade radiant bronzed so I think I'm gonna use the bronze cherry I'm gonna oh wow that's really pigmented so I put it on my hand to kind of warm it up pat that on my cheeks this is the area where I normally like to put my blush a little bit across my nose as well because it just really helps to warm up my face and add a little bit more color back. So I wanna make sure that I'm not bringing my blush lower than this. We want everything to look really chiseled and cut. So I'm kind of keeping the blush up on my cheekbones. And then I'm gonna take what's remaining and drag that across my nose. Okay, then going back in with my sponge gonna blend out all the edges so now going in with my setting powder okay wipe off some of the foundation that I have on my lips next I'm gonna bronze up I'm not sure if this bronzer is gonna be deep enough for me but this one is the elf forever sun-kissed bronzer similar to the blush we want to make sure that the bronzer is placed about right here if I suck in You'll see that I have shadows that naturally occur in this area, so that is where I want to apply the bronzer. You can kind of suck into to kind of see where you should place it. So I'm just bronzing my entire face. It helps to bring a lot more color back, especially after all of that foundation and concealer. It just helps to make your makeup look a little bit more natural. For bronzers too, I normally like to apply it in kind of a three shape, so it'll be like this. And like this. I also like to pat a little bit of bronzer on my chin as well because it just helps to make the makeup look not as cakey down there. I personally like to layer my cream and powder products because it just helps my makeup to last a longer amount of time, especially because I have such oily skin. Blush is one of the products that fade the quickest on my skin. I also love the really blushed effect, so I'm just gonna layer it. I'm using here the e.l.f. blush in the color Always Rosy, so I'm gonna pick that up on a little angled brush and put that in the same area where use the cream blush and it helps to bring so much more color back to my face I cannot live without blush I'm gonna go back into the little eyeshadow quad that we used earlier and I'm gonna pick up that dark shade that we put all over the lid I'm actually gonna smudge that on the lower lash line I prefer using shimmer shades because it doesn't really close off my eye area I prefer my eyes to look really bright and open like, see how pretty that looks? Just makes it look like I put so much more effort into my eyeshadow, and it's such a quick and easy step that you can do. Then for my lips, I'm actually gonna use the same monochromatic stick that we used from e.l.f., and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit on my finger and pat that into my lips. This really helps to kind of tie in all the colors that we use on our face together. And that is it for today's makeup look. I hope you all enjoyed. I will go ahead and link all the products down below in the description box like I always do. I love the way that the makeup turned out. It is so soft and pretty and super easy to recreate. I also wanted to say a big thank you to Elf for partially sponsoring this video. I'm such a fan of their products and obviously everything worked out so beautifully. That is all for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next and I will see you in the next video. Bye.